Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are covering items that we keep with us at all times in the RV. Now this is not an essentials video. We've already made an essentials video. Essentials like tools, first aid kits, flashlights, they're all important, but we're going to cover something a little bit different in this video today. Stick around. The items we're covering today are items that are specific to the following categories. First, they are components or a replacement of a component on one of the major systems on your RV. Second and probably most important is if these items fail, they can cripple your camping trip. And third, these are items you can't just find everywhere, so it's a good idea to have these on board before you head out on your camping trip. Now, anything can fail on your water heater, and most people are not carrying a spare water heater with them. So we'll cover some items that fail more often than others. And as always, links to these products will be down below in the video description. So again, we're not talking about the tools necessary to replace a spare tire. They're important to have, but something that you might wanna know is that some RVs have different lug nut sizes holding the spare tire on versus the lug nut size on your axle. I have no idea why RV manufacturers would do this, but this is the case on some RVs, including mine. So make sure you have a socket that fits the spare tire lug nuts if it is different from the lug nuts on your axle. If the lug nuts on your tow vehicle require a special adapter key, make sure you have the socket that will fit that key. Roofs are one of the most commonly repaired spots on your RV. A damaged roof membrane while you're traveling can be bad and it's worse if you're caught in the rain. Leaks can cause major damage to your RV and big bucks to repair, so it's always a good idea to have some type of roof repair material with you at all times. If you bring a self-leveling lap sealant, make sure that you also have a caulking gun with you. I keep a six inch roll of Eternabond tape with us at all times in case I have to patch a spot on the roof. For those with water heaters without anode rods, your drain plug is probably plastic, and these can wear down over time and lose their seal from removing and installing. You can pick these up for about a buck each on Amazon. We always keep a couple spares in the RV. For those of you with anode rods, these plugs are usually made of metal, and the anode rod itself will usually diminish before the plug starts to leak. If they're past their usable life, Corrosion can develop in your water heater, and we all know that's a bad thing. So it's probably a good idea to keep a spare anode rod with you at all times. For all the same reasons that your water heater drain plug can fail, so can your low point drain plugs. Now I've upgraded my low point drain plugs to valves, but I still keep a few of these on board at all times. If your low point drain plugs or valves fail, you're going to lose water pressure throughout your entire plumbing system. Fuses, this one's easy. Keep extra fuses, three to five per fuse that you have in your RV. Check your owner's manual because there may be fuses in other locations on your RV besides just the fuse panel. There's different styles and types of fuses as well too, so do some research on your camper and make sure you stock up. The next item isn't something that's necessarily in use all the time on your camper, but it can replace something that is in use. A dog bone adapter will allow you to plug your RV into a different size receptacle than what your RV normally calls for. Some campgrounds only have 30 or 50 amp service. Sometimes it's campground wide, sometimes it's site specific, and sometimes you don't have the option to pick your site. All of the sites here have water, electric, and sewer full hookup sites. But here's a note. All of the power pedestals have two 50 amp connections. So if you have a 30 amp camper, you will need an adapter. So a dog bone adapter will allow you to plug a 30 amp RV into a 50 amp receptacle and vice versa. Now plugging a 50 amp camper into a 30 amp receptacle is going to limit your power, but at least you'll have something until you can get the issue fixed. Even if the campground has 30 amp and 50 amp receptacles, a dog bone will allow you to plug into the other receptacle if there's a problem, for example, with the breaker on the one that you wanna plug into until the campground can get everything figured out. While on the subject of power, it's a good idea to inventory all of your batteries for your smoke detectors, flashlights, or any other battery powered devices that you keep in your RV. While extra batteries aren't necessarily a component of your RV, having a flashlight to use to diagnose something underneath the camper or behind a cabinet is always a plus. I got one of these battery organizers and I stock it at the beginning of every camping season so I know I always have batteries on hand. So I cheated a little bit on this one because it's not an RV component, but it can come in handy. 
If you camp in the fall or winter months, it's a good idea to have an electric heater on board. We all know electric heaters are great because you can use the campground's free electric, but these are very nice to have if you do run out of propane until you can get it filled. If you ever have a plumbing leak in your RV, having the right tools and materials can be a lifesaver. So I keep a couple feet of PEX hose, crimps, and a pair of PEX crimpers in the camper at all times. These are specialty crimpers designed specifically for PEX or shark bite fittings. A thermal cutoff is a protection device on most RV water heaters. These little guys will detect excessive heat at your water heater and eliminate power going to your water heater. It's not an overly common problem for RV water heaters to lose power, but when they do, these thermal cutoffs are usually the culprit. Now, in most cases, the thermal cutoff will only cut off power to the propane side of your water heater, while the electric side will still work. Now, I have talked to a few people that swear up and down that the thermal cutoff will eliminate power to the propane side and the electric side on some older water heater models. These are specific to your water heater model, so you're going to need to do a little bit of research, but they're not expensive, they don't weigh anything, and it's good to have these on board. Keep in mind, this list can be subjective specifically to your camper, the duration of your camping trips, how far you travel from home, and the type of weather that you camp in. We camp anywhere from one weekend to a week long, and we usually don't travel more than four hours from home. If there's something I didn't mention in this video, it's probably for one of those reasons. I'll leave it up to you guys to get down in the comments below and let everybody else know items that you keep in your RV that could save a camping trip. As always, links to the products mentioned in this video are down below in the video description. If you enjoyed the video, we hope you consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.